This was me on October 2021. I had just given birth to my son a month prior and despite me being the heaviest weight I'd ever been, I was pretty comfortable with the way I looked. I knew eventually I would wanna get back to my pre-pregnancy weight, but I knew I didn't wanna go down that same cycle of dieting that I always found myself under. It would always start with phase one. My diet plan was not very chill. It was a lot of no's, like no rice, no bread, no pasta, no noodles, no sugar, no ice cream, no cakes. It was only gonna be salads and chicken and vegetables. Once my diet started, I would be a very quote unquote good. I would just be exercising every single day and I'd be sticking to my meal plan. By the end of the week, I am feeling good. I'm seeing some progress. I'm on a roll, but that's when Friday night rolls in. So I would find myself partying every single weekend. And even though I was pounding skinny minis all night, it would still take a huge toll on me. And the next day I would be just completely destroyed, just a shell of myself. And I would always think that the cure to my hangover would be Domino's, Carby, a corn dog, thinking that it's gonna help me. But I end up just feeling more shitty about myself. And this leads us to the final phase. At this point, I already had a bad first meal. So I might as well treat myself to another and another one. And then that conveniently leads us back to phase one. So this was generally the cycle that I caught myself in until now. This is my body now after 16 months and I am very proud to say that I did not crash diet. I didn't fall under this cycle, this spell that I used to. Instead, I just followed these guidelines that I'm about to share with you to get gently back into shape physically and also mentally. So first I wanna stress the importance of mental health because these are some photos of me back in 2019. I was technically like the lowest weight I had ever been, but I was still incredibly insecure with the way I looked. It was just like always like a work in progress. But therapy throughout the years has definitely helped me become more compassionate with myself and my body image. This is where I wanna thank BetterHelp for sponsoring today's video. So BetterHelp is a service with over 25,000 licensed and experienced therapists. They cover a wide range of topics. They are now the largest therapy service and it's 100% online. Getting started is really simple. You just answer a couple of these questions that describe your needs and your preferences, and then they will match you with a licensed therapist in your network. You can message your therapist at any time and you can schedule live video sessions whenever it's convenient for you. And you can choose whatever medium that you like, whether that's chat or text, video, phone call. You can expect to have the same level of professionalism and quality as you would at an in-person session. And BetterHelp just allows you to have more schedule flexibility and it's easier on the wallet. They also recognize that that finding a good therapeutic match is very important. So if you need to change therapists, then they do that at no additional cost. Right now you can get 10% off your first month using my link, betterhelp.com slash Jen. That's better H-E-L-P. I will leave that link in the description box and you could also scan the QR code right here. Very fancy. I just wanted to make a little quick disclaimer letting you guys know that I did not follow any of these diet tips I'm about to say until after I finished breastfeeding, meaning that I did not modify my diet or watched what I ate while I was breastfeeding. I had full range on eating everything that my heart desired. I began with collecting some data. I calculated my TDEE, which stands for total daily energy expenditure. Now this is gonna vary wildly depending on each person because we are all different. But according to my body stats, I would only need around 1500 to 1600 calories every day. Now my TDEE is lower because I am petite. I'm only five foot one, so I technically need less calories than someone who is like six foot four. I know numbers can be very triggering to some but I just needed an objective number so I could establish a healthy goal. In order for me to maintain my weight, I would need to eat around like 1600 calories a day. But if I wanted to lose weight, I would just need to eat slightly under this consistently. Uh, if I ate more than this amount, then I would gain weight. Now this gives me some boundaries for my weight loss goals. And before you get carried away being like, oh, if my TDE is 1500, then I'm only gonna have a thousand calories a day. 
This, my friends, is not sustainable. This is how you yo-yo uh, your weight. I just slashed maybe like 100 calories to 50 calories a day. And I wasn't super strict about it, like looking at all the nutrition facts. Instead, I would just be like, hey, maybe today I won't splash milk in my coffee. Or maybe instead of ketchup, I would just have hot sauce. Like it would just be very small tweaks to work around that like 50, 100 calorie mark. And with this gradual process, then the weight comes off. This is the classic equation of calories in, calories out. So I have observed a pattern where I enjoy eating large meals all at once. I've tried eating like the small amounts and like peck throughout the day, but that just does not work for me. I'm like a volume eater. So this is where intermittent fasting has just benefited me immensely. I have 1500 calories for my TDEE. So it made sense for me to eat two large meals in a day and make Maybe a snack. So I fasted five days out of the week and my window is like a 16 hour fast window. So my last meal would be at 6 p.m. and my first meal would be at like 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. And there are tons of studies that are coming out that show how beneficial intermittent fasting is. Uh, it helps promote weight loss, particularly fat loss, liver health, cognitive health, longevity, and more. I will leave like my favorite video about intermittent fasting in the description box by Dr. Andrew Huberman. He is incredible. This has just been like the easiest way for me to eat the foods that I want while losing and maintaining my physique. I think it's important to focus on eating whole foods that you genuinely enjoy the taste of. Now, whole foods are ones that don't have a huge ingredient list. Like an apple is just an apple. If you are thinking, oh, whole foods are so bland and boring, you guys are completely dismissing an entire rich category filled with delicious, nutritious foods. Like for example, broccoli. Broccoli is just an outstanding vegetable. And I think now I have like a few recipes on rotation that I just know is just filled with goodness, which is awesome. I will also leave like a link to like I, what I eat in a week video in the cards if you need some recipe ideas. And when I'm prepping my meals, I always think about adding. For example, let's say I'm eating some mac and cheese. Instead of just having it with the noodles and cheese, I will add broccoli, peas, a chicken, a protein. And then I'll also have like mixed greens on the side. If I'm having ramen, I will add bok choy, spinach, and egg. Let's say I'm making burgers. I will load that sucker up with lettuce and tomatoes. Like at this point in my life, I will eat pretty much everything, but I will just throw a bunch of vegetables at it. And it kind of shifts my perspective into a place of abundance rather than scarcity. You know what I mean? Instead of saying like, oh, I can't have pizza. I'll just say, I'll have pizza and I'll also have a big salad with it. My next tip is to not demonize whole foods. I know that there's a lot of people that really get in the weeds with macros and calorie counting, and I do think that's important to an extent, but if you are like shaming yourself for eating an avocado or adding too much olive oil to your salad or your meals, I think it's time to kind of be more gentle on yourself. Like this is me speaking to my old self because I would use like olive oil spray and I would just eat like a slither of an avocado because I thought it was too high in calories. But now I'm understanding that these are good fats and they're actually good for me and they keep me satiated for longer. Like I would not beat yourself over eating too much fruit or eating too many avocados. Like literally no one got obese from eating too many avocados. It's the process that's gonna make you gain weight. And processed foods are the ones with just like a lot of ingredients. Like, like the processed foods are all the foods that are located in the center of the grocery store. All the whole foods are located on the exterior aisles. I think the only tip I have for exercise is to find a form of movement that you enjoy and just be consistent with it. My exercise preferences are all over the place. I love Pilates, I love walking, running, hiking, strength training, yoga. It's a blend of everything because I do believe that variety is the spice for life. Right now, my heavy phase is weightlifting twice a week yoga twice a week and then hiking or running one time a week. And I find that this has been just like a nice way for me to stay active and get my 
my movement. I wanna to touch on some setbacks. Let's say you eat a bag of chips or you have some cake. Now is not the time to just continue to ruin your diet because you had just one indulgent thing. This is something that I call the ah. lever, which is a lever I would pull all the time. Since I already had a naughty meal, I might as well just have a naughty day. This piece of advice that I heard recently just completely changed my perspective on this. They use this analogy. Let's say you're driving a car and one of the tire blows out. You wouldn't go outside and slash all three of the tires. Any sane person would just fix the broken tire and then proceed. So the next time you have a treat or indulgent meal, just work on fixing that tire and then for your next meal, eat something delicious and nutritious and move on. My final tip is that slow and steady wins the race. Anytime that I've lost weight and I've kept it off, it's been through a very gradual process. And anytime I went on something too restrictive or I was like crash dieting, then my weight would just yo-yo. I would like gain back that weight so quickly and maybe even a little bit more like this whole process took me 16 months to get to this weight now and i'm feeling good and happy with myself and i think that is what really matters in the end it's like how you feel in your body and that and that confidence will exude out so this concludes my weight loss pillars i hope you find them helpful and good luck with everything i will see you guys in my next one thank you for watching bye